There was another big story, actually, relating to our borders, our national security and immigration, etc., that dropped, which is that our asylum seeker backlog is now pretty much at record levels and the cost of the taxpayer is eye-watering as well. Would you mind just running our, our viewers and our listeners through that, please? I, I will. However, before we go on to that, it's an irony, isn't it, that Shamima Begum, had she jumped, managed to get herself to Calais and jumped in a boat and got here, we'd have been stuck with her, whatever the court said. But that's, mm. that's another story. Uh, yeah, the, the numbers are ballooning, but it was always inevitable that the numbers in the backlog were going to grow. And as those numbers grow, the costs of putting people up in hotels or wherever, of giving them pocket money while they're waiting for decisions, all that was going to go up now over £2 billion a year. That, I'm afraid, is not going to be helped by uh, the government deciding effectively to declare an amnesty for those who are waiting for decisions to be made. Because that, that is really what is being proposed. There's going to be a box ticking exercise whereby if you are accepted as coming from a certain country where experience shows that you are uh, likely to be, uh, the courts are likely to accept your uh, uh, um, asylum application, then mm. you won't even think about it. You won't talk to them. You say, OK, well, there's no, no point in going through with this because we're going to lose, so let them in. That is wrong. That is very wrong, and I think sends all entirely the wrong signals to people who think, well, all you need to do is get here and you're going to stay. Yeah. That's what's happening. That's why the numbers are growing. If mm. we were to hold people who arrive, deal with them quickly and move them on, remove them, then they would stop coming. That's how to get the backlog down, not by... Well, this is it. I mean, I had concerns about this, and I know a lot of people did when uh, Rishi Sunak announced initially, well, look, we're going we're to reduce the backlog to, to zero. And I thought, well, how are you going to do that? And as far as you're concerned, it might do it by just waving a load of people through out. Well, that, that's, that's exactly what's going to happen. That's what we've been told will happen. That if, you're, if you come from the Yemen or Eritrea or Afghanistan, Syria or Libya, then effectively you'll be told, OK, that's, we can't get rid of you, so you can have permission to stay. Bearing in mind that it was from those sort of countries, from Afghanistan, from Libya, where uh, the Bournemouth murderer not so long ago, the, the case mm. we heard a couple mm. of weeks ago, he was from Afghanistan who conned his way into the country. There was the Reading murderer. He was a Libyan and a failed asylum seeker. So you know, let's not forget all this. And let's yeah. not forget that so many of them actually apply and are rejected for asylum in countries on the other side of the channel. Yeah.